Hi, um, today is October 16th and we're going to spend some time working with Esperanza. Um, one of the biggest problems that I see with most horses and people who ride horses is that their horse isn't used to scary objects. I think that most people do things a little bit backwards. They put their horse in the round pen, they go through all the steps to break the horse, and then they have the attitude that I'll just put some miles on them and get them used to things. They, they, they've got to get used to things as they're getting the miles put on them. And in my opinion, that's exactly backwards of the way things should be done. All the desensitization that you can possibly do should be done before you get on their backs. And so this is Esperanza. She's a two-year-old Peruvian Paso filly. A little tiny thing, and so we can't ride her yet. But we're going to spend some time desensitizing her today, and we're going to use the infamous scary blue tarp. Now, I'm going to do things a little bit different today because I have a broken shoulder, actually a broken clavicle. And this goes to another point that in horsemanship or in horse training, people have a tendency to think that there's only one way to get things done or that you have to do the same, do it the same way as Joe such and such horse trainer does. And normally I do this on a lead rope, like a 14 foot lead rope in the round pen so that she can move around if she wants. But I've still got to get this done and I've got a broken collarbone so um, this will show an example of how you can still get the same thing done with a little bit different technique. Uh, she's, as you can see, she's a little impatient today. The weather's changing on us. So we've been giving them a little more grain and she's a little bit, she's got some energy today. So this is a good example of what it will be like to, to, to work through a horse that's uh, a little bit nervous. Now, um, one of the things that I'll mention and I mentioned it before, is that people have a tendency to think about getting their horses used to scary objects after they're already riding them and after they're already on their trail rides and things. And this is just an accident waiting to happen. Um, if you're on your horse and you decide you want to take your jacket off, you pull your arms back like that and your horse takes off, guess what? You're, you're in a straight jacket now and you're in big trouble because that horse is going to take off running and you can't get you don't have any control because your jacket's back here behind you. So getting your horse or your mule or your donkey used to scary objects and objects that you might encounter on the trail is of utmost importance. In, in my opinion, it's probably more important than anything else that you can do with your horse. Um, I have a friend that has had a runaway a few times on his horse because he opened a soda, opened a soda can while he was riding and the horse didn't like that sound took off and he was real fortunate not to get hurt but it could have gone the other way so horses are afraid of scary objects and scary objects to horses are um, objects that move objects that make a sound and um, let me grab this blue tarp here Rick, right quick a blue tarp is used in horse training an awful lot and it's the main reason that it makes a lot of noise, it feels strange to them, it looks strange to them. So this is about one of the most scary objects that you can put on a horse. And so we're going to get this little horse used to this. And the way I'm going to start is I'm going to crumple it up. This is an old ratted one that I use all the time. I'm going to crumple this up and I'm first going to see how she responds to it when I approach her with it. We talked about earlier when we were teaching Esperanza to accept the saddle, that every horse has a personal bubble, a space that they're comfortable with you at. Some horses, like wild mustangs, it might be five miles that they're comfortable. You get within five miles, they're going to take off running. Other horses have a very uh, a closer personal bubble where you can get right in on them. So with this object, I'm going to approach her and get a, a feeling of, of what she thinks about it. And she hasn't seen this before. I haven't done this before. Um, she's a nice filly, so we'll see how this goes. I'm going to just, okay, she took a look at it. She didn't react very, 
very much. Oh, I'm going to take it away. That I was happy with the fact that she looked at it and she didn't bolt on me. She didn't get upset. So I'm going to do it again. Oh, there's another look. Curiosity is very, very important when you're training a horse. If you can work with their curiosity and let them experience things instead of forcing things on them, you're going to be much farther ahead in the game. I expect that she's going to want to sniff this to see what it is. Now it's wadded up here right now and um, let me move her over a little bit so she has a chance to turn her head and look at it. She's going to want to smell this and see what that is. See, right there, she wanted to smell it. And the horses will do that. They, they're curious in nature, but they're afraid at the same time in the beginning. So you can't push things too fast. So she smelled it. She's not familiar with it. So I accepted that as a success and I took it away from her. So now the pressure that I applied by putting the object near her is gone. Let's do it again. See you looking at it. She's probably going to reach over and smell it. There she goes. I'm going to let her, oh, she's playing with it with her mouth a little bit. That's perfect. So there's another win. It's a win for her and it's a win for me. I take it away and let that soak in a little bit. Let's try it again. There she goes again. She sniffed it. So she's comfortable touching this object. I know that the personal space that she'll allow me into, or her bubble, is really, really narrow, really small bubble right now. So I'm going to see if I can touch her with it now. I'm going to see if I can just gently touch her with it, and then I'm going to take it away. First, I'm going to let her smell it. Let her see it so she knows what it is. Good. And I'm going to touch her with it. Can you see her step away? She's not so sure about that. It's okay, now we're, this is what we're expecting. I'm inside her personal bubble. There, very good. She took a deep breath and accepted that. When a horse takes a deep breath and lets that breath out, that's a sign that they've accepted it. Let's do it again. I always present it to her first. There we go, she smelled it. Not interested in it. She's paid attention to me. She wants a little attention right now. So now I've rubbed her with that a couple times. Another win-win for both of us. The key here really is that I'm taking small steps, tiny little baby steps. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but she twitched there a little bit. Her muscles did that involuntary twitch like she would if she had a fly on her. It's because this sensation on her skin is different than anything she's used to. And the reason she just didn't blow up when I approached her with this is really, really simple. I took the time to find out what distance she's comfortable with me at while I'm holding this object. 